Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our first reading, we are going to read two Bible verses this morning before I go into this message. And I want to bring us to the um, remembrance that we are still in the series of love, a way to break through. Love, love series. That's what we are doing. Amen. Hallelujah. And I pray for you as you listen and as we go together, if this world will meet faith in you in the name of Jesus. It will do what no one can do in your, our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shall we just read Genesis chapter 18? If somebody is there, and we are reading from verse 1 to 10. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to 10. Before that, can I just greet all people joining us online? We want to say we appreciate you wherever you are in the parts of the world. We appreciate you for allowing us into your, into your room today. And we really, really want to thank God for your life. And we, ask, we know that by God's grace, this is just by divine appointment that you are tuning out to, to this church today. The Lord will meet you at the point of your needs in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. So can we have that Genesis? Yes. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to, to 18. 10. To, to 10. 10, yes. The Lord appeared again to Abraham yes. near the oak grove belonging to Marbra. Mm. One day, Abraham was sitting at the entrance of his tent during the hottest part of the day. Mm. He looked up and noticed three men standing nearby. Mm. When he saw them, he ran to meet them and welcomed them, mm. bowing low to the ground. My Lord, he said, mm. if it pleases you, stop here for a while. Rest in the shade of this tree while water is brought to wash your feet. And since you have honored your servant with this visit, let me prepare some food to refresh you before you continue on your journey. All right, they said, do as you have said. So Abraham ran back to the tent and said to Sarah, hurry, get three large measures of your best flour, knead it into dough and bake some bread. Mm. Then Abraham ran out to the herd and chose a tender calf and gave it to his servant who quickly prepared it. When the food was ready, Abraham took some yogurt and milk and the roasted meat, and he served it to the men. As they ate, Abraham waited on them in the shade of the, of the trees. Where is Sarah, your wife, the visitors asked. She's inside the tent, Abraham replied. Then one of them said, I will return to you about this time next year, and your wife Sarah will have a son. Sarah was listening to this conversation from the tent. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wanted to tell somebody beside you that God comes through in love. And then you change it and say, God will come through in love for you this year. Hallelujah. I was looking at the thing on the screen and it says, the year of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know that God love is very important in all that we do? You know, it's strange. Maybe it's strange to you. You know, when pastor said love, I just, pastor love. Okay, breakthrough. Okay. Then I went to God. I said, what am I going to say now to your people? Uh, yeah, and, and I said, God, help me. And my start point my starting point of all this, love, is for me to check myself. And what I'm going to be talking about this afternoon is God loves. God, God's love, not word, worldly love. God loves. God's love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's love. The Bible says God so loved the world so much that he gave his only what? The God in son. Hallelujah. That means when we are still in a sinner, God did what? Die for us. That's how powerful love is. I know pa Pastor has said quite a lot of things about love. You know, Pastor has, you know, in the series, last two series, Pastor has told us what love is about and what love is. But I want to lay some emphasis today that probably will give us, you know, an heads up as to what we need to do this year to get to our place of breakthrough. Hallelujah. 
And the title of my message this afternoon, you know me, I always have title. I always ask God for this. Uh, it's, uh, it's God's love. God's love in you is a launch pad to multiple breakthrough. God's love in you is a launch pad to a multiple what? Breakthrough. Hallelujah. City of Zion. Ah, City of Zion. Just checking your attention. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we quickly go and look at what Colossians says about love. Colossians chapter 3. And we are reading from 14 to 17. It's quite striking. So many things was said before this. And, you know, God was saying something to us there. If anybody can read that for me. Above all, yeah. clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Hallelujah. Which means love is a form of perfectness. Hallelujah. Amen. He said in perfect harmony. It's a form of what? Perfection. Hallelujah. Go on. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your heart. Hmm. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Verse hmm. 16. Yep. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all wisdom that he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful heart. Verse 17. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Hallelujah. Did we hear that? Thank God I didn't write that. <laughs> it's, what's, it's in the Bible. So what is God's love? God's love is pure, is trustworthy, and is what? Constant. I'll say that again. It's not like the world's love. You know, the world's love, you have it today. Uncle is there today. Guess what? Uncle is not there tomorrow. Uncle might even change his mind about you. You might think you are, you are trying to become like me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God's love here is pure, is trustworthy, and is what? Constant. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been called into the kingdom of love. Hallelujah. Kingdom of love. You want to have a breakthrough? I'm still going there. That passage that we read. You have to live in what? In love. What kind of love? God's love. Are we getting the message? We have to live in love. And in what's love? God's love. It will surprise you that without God's love, we might not get there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God's love is pure. So, you know, our life should be, you know, God should be what? The love of our life. How many people know that? If you know that God should be the God of your life, can somebody just raise, you know, just say, hallelujah, give me some high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, there's no love elsewhere in the world that no one can give you or give me than God's love. Why? Because God's love is unconditional. Hallelujah. It's eternal. It's consistent. That is the love we are talking about. It's not the love of, oh, my husband. <laughs> Tomorrow. You say, what you say you was your husband last week? What happened now? My job. Oh, I told, I told you, you said you love that job. What happened? Oh, it's my uncle. Oh, sorry, uncle is not here anymore. 
But we are talking about God's love here. Hallelujah. May the God's love fill your heart in the name of Jesus. So we are expected to relate in God's love to each other. We are expected as human race, born chosen generation, hallelujah, royal priesthood, to relate in God's love with each other. Out of which, we'll be asking God for help. Hallelujah. I pray that God's love will fill the hearts of somebody as you listen to me this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Do you know that he loved us so much that he engraved us on the palm of his hand? Hallelujah. God so much loved you and loved me. My name, your name, is engraved in his palm of his hands. Which means he will never what? He will never what? He will never forsake you. He will never for, forget you. It's always there. Hallelujah. How many people on this planet can you say that of? Apart from God's love. Brethren, despite your shortcomings, despite my shortcomings, hallelujah, he still loves us. God still what? Loved us. And that's why for me, when I was preparing this message, I was, uh, as I said, I shiver. And I have to look at some of the things that I was doing. And I have to, like, remind myself of some of the ways that I work that's not right. And I have to make some correction very, very quickly. Before I come, come on to the pulpit here, I was saying to myself, I need to check. Because at times, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He gives us the Spirit to be able to check ourselves. We wanted to go and talk about this. What is he saying to you? How does it minister to you? Are you living in God's love? Everybody is crying, you know, year of uh, breakthrough. Whether you will get there or not, it's up to you. To take on to the, you know, to the way of God. And I believe as many that are listening this afternoon, the grace of God will be available unto us in Jesus' name. I said the grace of God will be available to us in Jesus' name. Regardless of our negative, negative thoughts, you know, some of us, if they open up our hearts right now and see what is in our heart, I'm telling you, the person next to you will run. Never, we, we will never sit with you anymore. What do you abort in your heart? Is it God's affection, God's love, charity? Or is it all about yourself? Brethren, your attention is being drawn to God's love today for a reason. And I'm going there. Except we follow in the right way. I always say to people, <laughs> I, I know probably Pastor Dr. and Dick Nestor will remember this. I always say to people in the Southeast, I said to you, if you want to become an herbalist, be a good herbalist. If you want to become a child of God, be a proper child of God. Remember what that God love says there. He says it's pure. That means it cannot be old sin. For people that want to excel this year in multiple breakthroughs, they must live in God's love. Your life must beam love of God to people around you. Let's look at that Bible passage that we read. Abraham, even after the promise of God, okay, had Ishmael before that time, before Genesis, he had Ishmael, okay? But what happened is this. He didn't give up. Likewise, some of us here, I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you think God has promised you, but it seems like it's not coming through. 
And because of that, guess what we do? We carry our problem on top of our head and we are telling everybody we have problems. Hallelujah. So, how uh, are you pretending? Uh, uh, we always do that now. People see you say, ah, oh, what's going on? As if the old world has come down. I love that song. Say, count your blessing. Lay them one by one. And it will what? Surprise you what the Lord has done. Some people are not even here anymore. Some people don't even have the opportunity that you have. Some of us, we have a good head start. Some didn't even have a good head start. They struggled. But God was faithful. They didn't carry it on their head. They keep smiling. And guess what? Because they are relating in God's love, God is always making way for them. I believe I'm speaking to somebody here this afternoon. Maybe God has promised you something and it's yet to come through. The Bible says, will, you, will he say a thing and will not come to pass? That is not the God that we serve. When he says a thing, it comes to pass. The Bible says what and yea and what? Amen. But some of us, with our attitude, with our mindset, with our problems that we carry along and display and cascade it to everybody around us, we've sent away our helpers. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. The unfortunate thing is this. The helpers don't carry something on their tag on their head to say, I'm your helper. Mm -mm. If, they, if they do, oh, that was easy. You immediately, you, you know, you will tie your wrapper with them and you make sure they don't go anywhere. But that's not the case here. And you can see in, in that Abraham case, Abraham was just relaxing. He knew, he knew God has said what God has said, okay? And he put his mind at rest. But Abraham was full of kindness. Mm. When I say kindness, I say, what is kindness? Ah! What is kindness, Pastor? Ah. As if God has not been faithful. I always tell people this that we are even alive alone is enough. <laughs> I love Psalm 150, verse 6 said, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I will say that again. He said, Let everything that has breath, what? So it's only when you have breath in you, sir, that you can even think of tomorrow or today. Because tomorrow doesn't belong to you. Hello? Wake up, somebody. That's why we pray that prayer now. Give us this day our what? We didn't say give us this day tomorrow's bread. Am I right? So somebody here needs to be very careful. For the rest of this year, I want somebody to live cheerfully, full of kindness, full of favor, beaming smiles, when it's good, when it's not good. Hallelujah. Because this is the way of the Lord, whether we believe it or not. We ask, guess what? God check it out to see if that's what really fit us. Because God does, just don't want to kill us very quickly. Some people will be asking for, God, give me a billion. If you see 100 million, you will, you will just, some people will just have heart attack. Hallelujah. They will just die. You they cannot manage uh, 1 million. If you see 100 million, they, they will call doctor for you. Because they will think it's gone. Ah. So what is it about Abraham? What made Abraham felt, God, I know this is not what you promised, but now I have Ishmael. But you are a God 
that never fail. But no matter what, I will still be happy. I'll be cheerful. I'll be kind to people. I will not make people my enemy. So he saw those three guys. And he didn't know them from anywhere. The only thing that I realized is that these guys that were coming forth are so like they've been on a long journey. And they need help. They were not asking for help. Brethren, so I want you to be careful because in our behavior at times, guess what we do? We send off away our angels. May you not send away your angels of help, help in the mighty name of Jesus. But we got to be cautious. We got to be careful that we are on the right path. In season and out of season, God loves, is able to sustain us. I say God love is able to sustain us. Hallelujah. You know what? This God even feel our pains. He feel it when we lost our battles. But he knows. He knows your frame. He knows my frames. He knows where he is taking us to. The Bible says, the thought I have towards you is what? So why are we not cheerful? So when we say breakthrough, ladies and gentlemen, it's for those people that live in God's love, that breathe God's love, that express God's love, that are not move, movable by things they see. Hallelujah. Some people see one thing and they start fidgeting. It's like it's the end of the world. May God help us in Jesus' name. You know, God's love, I'm still going on the story of Abraham. It's an answer to prayer, sir. God's love is an answer to prayer. You know, no wonder. Saul, you know, you know, you know, you know those guys. In the cell, what did they do? They started praising God. Hallelujah. Because they know it's not over until when God says it's over. I want you to say to somebody, it's not over until when God says it's over. Hallelujah. So when you relate in God's love, what you get is answer to prayer. Your emotion can't stop God. Can't invite God. But your plea, the way you comport yourself, the way you do, show that Lord, that what? You are in faith. You are shaking. Because your God is never shaking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And some of the things that we need to, you know, look at, look at Abraham there. He didn't have all bitterness. He hasn't got time for that. So when he saw these guys, he just thought they need help. The first thing in his mind is they need help. How many of you here, we see somebody that's in the middle of problem, even in the church, don't let's talk about outside, that we move closer. You'll be, in fact, they'll be running gossip. Mm, Radio BBC, Zion Channel, on that person. May God have mercy. And I, I'm just saying this because it's not me that prepared this message. I believe Holy Spirit wants to speak to somebody concerning what we are talking about this afternoon. Because if you want to be part of those people that we say at the end of the year, Pastor, I have my breakthrough, you must change your mode of living. You need to start living God's way. You need to start breathing God's love. You need to start infecting people with your love, with your smiles. 
not that you carry it on the head as if you are dying tomorrow. If you, are, if you die, you die anyway. You know, if you die and you even don't praise God, in fact, that's double tragedy. Hallelujah. The Bible says we will not die, but we will live to declare the glory of the Lord, what? In the land of the living. That's your portion in the name of Jesus. He, he didn't have it. Abraham didn't have it. No harassment. He went to those guys. Oh, where have you been coming from? You look so tired. You know what? You need help. And I'm your help. He quickly went to Sarah. He issued command to Sarah that she has not issued before in ages. Start, get the best thing in the house, best food in the house, best thing in the house, best thing in the house. Oh, how many of us here? When somebody has a problem, you go and look for the one that you are not using anymore. Hey, you can manage this. Even though you know you are not using it. Those things are meant for the being. But you want to give those to, to, those, to that guy, you are still showing off. As if you are giving something special, spectacular. God have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to stop all that kind of life. You know what? You know something? You know something that fear me? Nothing goes without God notice. Say, tell somebody, nothing goes around here without God notice. When you do it in your room, he sees. When you say it to somebody else, he might be in Okong. He hears. Brethren, we are being challenged today. Because you will see what happened to Abraham as we go along. Abraham went on after instructing Sarah. He went along there and took the best of his livestock and cook for strangers. Hey? Can you do that? <sighs> you are feeling that one for Christmas and Easter. Hmm. And it must be you and your household that we have that. God have mercy with us at times. I pray that the grace to love unconditionally will come upon us today in the mighty name of Jesus. It's full of kindness. Mommy, Pastor Brian was telling us the other day, he said, that man is full of kindness anyway. He's a strange man. Can somebody want to, do somebody want to be strange for God here this year? Somebody just want to be strange for God. You just don't want to be clean up on the back of people. Hallelujah. You just want to be outstanding. I mean, standing differently. Man purpose, but what God does, what does God do? He disposes. If you are not saying it out, it doesn't matter. Remember what I said, nothing goes without God notice. When you are thinking about it, he knows. When you are gossiping it, he knows. But if you want to get to this promised land for multiple breakthrough, brethren, we need to start living better than what we have been doing in the past. And as we turn to God, we will see God in the name of Jesus. Walk continually in God's love. That's what Abraham did. He went, chose the best livestock ever, the fattest one, and cooked for strangers. Hallelujah. And no wonder. They said, no, no, don't, don't bother. I said, no, me, I will bother. In fact, some of us, what we are waiting for, somebody say, don't bother. Mm. I'll try. I can keep it for tomorrow. As if something will not finish. Some people will be doing, it's me and my wife mm, and our children. God have mercy. You need to open your eyes so you can see clearly. 
this year. People that are going here, they are people that are kind. They are people that are free in their heart, in their mind. They are people that are ready to share their life with other people. They say, come in, come in. Let me be a blessing to you. You want to be blessed? But you are keeping your blessings away. I'll give you an example that Pastor Brian gave to us. I'll give it to you. You know, when you are trying to, some of us that build house, I know some of us have built house, you know, silently in Nigeria. God bless you. I pray that you will live there in Jesus' name. I pray that you will live there in Jesus' name. I don't know why some people are not smiling. <laughs> that, that you don't break anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I, I, it's, it's just a prayer that people will still live there. You know, when you dig a ball hole, I learned this, old, Pastor taught me this. Old. When you dig a ball hole and you want to take a water from a ball hole, do you realize that to be able to get water coming from that ball hole, you need to do something that plumber call priming. Do you know what they call priming? That means you need to put a little bit of water to be able to draw what? More water. Hallelujah. How many want to draw more water out this year? Change your way of living. Look out. Stop looking in. You know, our problem is we look in. Including myself, I'm just saying, you need to start looking out now, my friend, if you want to get there. And look, look for who to help. Hallelujah. Don't just sit on your own problem. You know, a lake, what, does, what happened to a lake? Anybody knows? It stinks after a while. But what, what happened to a sea as it's going all over the place? It's fresh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is speaking to you today. This is not a long sermon. Don't worry, it's not going to be a long sermon. It's going to be a short one. But I'm praying that as we relate in God's love this year, it will release unto us multiple breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. That somebody will come back in December and say, Pastor, look at what God has done. Because when you challenge God, God will raise a standard, a standard up. That means you are no more on the main side, you are on the main side. Hallelujah. That is the portion of somebody here today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So God, God comes through in love. Mm. That thing you are believing God for, sir, is, in, is working through love. Brethren, I don't even ask anything. Yes, some people do used to say that. But you see it, you wake up. <laughs> you have life. When we say some people should dance here, yeah, it's difficult to dance. Look at the opportunity to give. The building project. It's just for you to prime your water. So that you can have abundance water flowing through into your life. That's it. No more. But you are looking at the money that you want to take. Uh, don't let me mention the place. Though, to go and build a big mansion. Then you don't know who is going to live there tomorrow. Ah, God have mercy. God have mercy. So what did God say about love? Let's have a look. Because it's quite interesting what God says about love. First John 4, verse 7 to 8. I think it's telling us in that passage that, you know, if you love, that means you know God. If you don't love, you do not what? Finish. Stephanie. Finish. If you do not love, brethren, stop go coming to church. Stop wasting our time. Because you are not the type that God wants. Yeah, we're coming here to just waste time and one share. And we think we're 100 now. Actually, we are minus 30. May God have mercy in the name of Jesus. 
I said, God, we have mercy upon us. I was here when Pastor was saying last week, a new commandment. Jesus said, a new commandment. A new commandment. It's built on what? Love. What love? God's love. Check yourself. Am I, am I, am I really a miser? If you are not a miser, I think there, there should be another definition for it. Relate in love. In God's love. Give. That will be what? Ah, thank you, Pastor. Give and shall be given unto you. Keep and it shall never be given unto you. It's so easy. And you become a lake. By the time you, you are fat and you start smelling, people come and carry you out. Listen, brethren, truth needs to be told. Okay? But if we are getting here, we need to get to where God wants to take us to. We need to change our lifestyle. Your lifestyle must relate to God's lifestyle. Because God is God of principle. Hallelujah. It's not emotional. No. My prayer is that as we all change, I plan to change. I will make a decision. You know, I was looking at something. It said, we shall decree 18 and it shall come to pass. But you have to make a decision. If you read some Bible uh, uh, type, it tells you when you get to a decision, then you decree 18 after the decision. And that comes to pass. So without a decision, that means you have thought about it, you have think about it, you have placed it well in your mind, you know what you want, and there you now de what? Decree. And it's established. No wonder it's not established for us. Because we are not even getting to a place of decision. We are all over the place. And say, I decree a thing. Say, to who? What are you decreeing? Decree in hatred. Some people they don't greet somebody. They think, they think they are just having life. Please don't go to hell very, very quickly. Anybody can die these days. Do you know that? Anybody can die. Youth die. Elders die. You know, young boys die. Who knows? Infant dies. But please, you have been told what the Lord requires of you. And I pray as we put our heart to it, the Lord Almighty will help us out in the name of Jesus. I said the Lord Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody excited with me? Are you upset with me? Sorry, I've just been too upfront. I don't know why. You know, I love what Isaiah say here. And Isaiah 55, verse 7b. He said, if we pardon others, God will what? Abundantly pardon us. Abundantly what? Pardon us. If you pardon us, which means if you don't pardon others, mm, you can be going to church every day, three, seven, five days a year. Thank you for wasting your time. You know, the grace of God is so good, Pastor. He, when you fail exam, he will come and meet you. Sorry, my child, you have not read very well. Fell, eh? uh, next time you read, eh? you, I'll make sure you pass. But make sure you read next time. Oh, it doesn't change your result. Oh. You fail, you fail. My prayer is that we not fail God in the name of Jesus. We not fail ourselves in the name of Jesus. You know, the biggest enemy that we have is ourselves. And it's important if you can start looking at a new lifestyle with God, a new way of life with God, living in God's love. Hallelujah. It can only be better for us. Hallelujah. No wonder. The Bible says in Romans 8, 38 to 39, it says, what is it that can separate us from the Lord, the love of God? You know, God has already loved you. But what can separate you? Guess what? We, ourselves. We tell God we can't do that. Sorry. We are not doing that. You know, this is the fast way. They make money this way. And guess what? Many have gone there and they have, they have never come back. 
But God knows the way. Hallelujah. So what is it? Is it money? Is it career? Is it a threat that you're not going to greet that sister until when you get to the grave? Huh. You better start, go, and go to the fire and feed the fire because where you are going is hotter than that. Is the truth. I know some people can't wait for me to get off from here. I will soon get off. But the truth needs to be told. So you will know in your heart of art that the Lord has spoken to you today. As you are sitting here today, it's been written. There's a witness here in heaven to say you are here, you heard this today, and you refuse to work on it. So at the end of the year, if you are looking for the breakthrough guys, if some of us are not here, then <laughs> don't let us uh, abuse God. Mm. Because God is faithful. I say God is faithful. Ever faithful. Trustworthy to deliver. And he's very constant. He will never lie. But we are talk talking about what can open doors for you. Smile. What can smile? Just small smile. Just, you don't pay for it. Ah, for, people, for some people to smile is even difficult. They'll be thinking about the uh, problem of Nigeria, of uh, Europe. What about yourself? How much have you thought about yourself? Oh, God have mercy. Because of that, in fact, they miss their food. They will have medical issues. May that not be a portion in Jesus' name. I said, may that not be a portion in the name of Jesus. No wonder, First Peter 2, verse 9, he says something. He said, you are a choosing generation. You are special people. And that's why you have the opportunity to hear this today. 23rd day of May, 2021. Because you are a special people to God. And God just wants, if only you can love me the way I love you. If only you can love me unconditionally. If only you can do my way. If only you can spread out to people, just bless people. I'm here for you. I'm your hall in all. I'm your bank that never run bankruptcy. I'm your water that never run dry. You're well. Hallelujah. 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 John 21 verse 16. You know, it's, it's quite, so interesting. When Jesus was this is why this love thing, when pastor introduces love, he actually challenged me. Jesus was asking, was it Peter? <laughs> Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yeah, ah, of course, ah, ah, I love you. Peter, do you love me? Ah, ah, I've been following you all this while, as if that matters. I love you. When he said it the third time, Peter said, ah, 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 stop asking Jesus. How you know I love you? He said, uh, look after what? My sheep. Brethren, do you love yourself? Or just, you know, love God? When you love God, your life is open to God. He cater and look after you. You know, that Geo tells us a history about three fishes. They went to God. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be riding off shortly, sir. Sorry, sir. I'll be riding off shortly. They went to God, and they were saying, God, I want to be secure. <laughs> One said to God, you know what I want? Just give me double eyes so I can see, like some of us. All you just want to say, God, just give me skill. If I have enough skill, the way I make money, eh? Hey! I see if he's the only one that's been in this world that want to make money. And the other fish said, no, 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 no. You know what I want? Just let me be able to fly. As soon as I see that death coming, I just fly away. And the other one said, God, just abide with me everywhere I go. You know something, guys? God is waiting on us to just hope on him. Nobody else. When you are out of water, he knows. He sent up your way. He makes things that look impossible, possible. The Bible says he's the way maker. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He, he can put an end to your struggles. 
and my struggles. May God help us in Jesus' name. I say, may God help us in Jesus' name. Somebody will be asking, Pastor, Pastor, you've been talking about this. What should we do? Now, listen. One, one of the things you should do is Second John verse 1 to 6. It says, it says, and this is love that we walk after his commandment. Listen to that. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye what? Ye should walk in it. Brethren, action is required. Action is required. You know, somebody, so they showed something on BBC a while ago. And they, they showed this monast monastery, sir. This monastery, they, they, somebody go there to see, go and see that because they said the guy, those guys have never seen it. They're like, you know, you know monasteries. So, and they went there. And the funniest thing about the monastery, you know what, what's the funniest thing about it? You get in there, nobody say anything to you. So the guy was trying to get it through the door. The, the monastery or whatever I call was trying to fly over the guy. So at the end of the day, the guy said, this is difficult. God wants you to do that thing, put into action. That God's love is not for you to keep in yourself. Express it. Show it to people. Let people feel you wherever you are. That you have the God's, of God's love in you. Hallelujah. So what did, what did Abraham did? Abraham gave them everything that they wanted. And you know, you know, because he didn't know that he was actually attending to angel. And the theologists, they said something. They said one of them was God. They are not even sure. So that means he was entertaining God because of the kind of art that he has. I'm saying to somebody today, please open up your doors. Open up your hearts to people today, this year. And walk into your breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus. That's what happened to him. But, you know, that same day, the promise of God for that guy was confirmed. Done. If you want God to see your multiple breakthrough, it's today. Make it your lifestyle from now on. Live in God's love. Hallelujah. Number two, 1 John 3, verse 18. He said, he said, 1 John 3, 18, he said, let's not love what? In word. Mm. Some, you know, some people will see somebody dying and say, it is well with you. Ah! The guy is about going to 999, to A&E, and &E, I say, it is well with him. So by the time he dies, you know it's not well with him. Express the love of God to that person in your action to the children of God. Hallelujah. And you will receive your reward because God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So if you, if you play by God's commandment, you will not lose. It's impossible. It's a person you do business with and never lose. Hallelujah. The third one is in Luke 6, 35. Love your enemies. This is a very hard one. Can somebody read that? I need somebody to read that. Luke 6, 35. Sorry, Pastor. Luke 6, 35. But love your enemies and mm -hmm. do good. Mm -hmm. And lend experience. And lend, expecting nothing in return. Ah. And your reward will be great, and ah. you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Ooh, did you hear that? Give. And, uh, did I hear? Don't, 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 don't ask back. Hallelujah. Love your enemies. This year, please, let bygone be bygone. Tell the enemy, sorry, I love you. I have a place to go. God is waiting for me. My God cannot build iniquity. So I must live a free life, holy life. Hallelujah. That's why God is wanting you. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. These are the people that make it. Hallelujah. You know, in offices, they do some things. I'll soon finish now. You know, 
if you, even if you don't like the next person, they still want you to work, work like what? A team worker. <laughs> to produce their product. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter. But if we know that we are working for God, let's put everything to, into action, and God will be there for us in Jesus' name. Let's love our enemies as well. Number four, love the children of God. You can read that in 1 John 5, verse 2 to 3. You loved what? The children of God. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, I believe I've been able to prove beyond doubt that God's love is a launch pad to multiple breakthrough in our life. What happened to Abraham? Abraham was blessed. That day, that son was called forth. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Shall we rise? Shall we rise? Thank you, Jesus. Brethren, I don't know about you, but these things I know on our own is, it might be difficult. So we need the grace of God. No wonder when Jesus was going, he said, he said to the disciples, he said, I will send you the comforter who will not only show you the way, but give you special powers. You want to ask for special powers to love this afternoon. The love that you will love that will open doors for you. Love that you will love that you will not even know those that you are loving. That we make way for you where there seems to be no way. Somebody want to pray in the next one minute before I hand over to pastor? Just pray. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. That God grant me special power to love more than what I can bear, Lord Almighty, to the glory of your name. To live in your love, God's love, all the days of my life. When is it possible? When is not possible? Give me the grace, Lord, Holy Spirit of God. And let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Almighty Daddy. We give you all the glory and honor. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. If you are here by any chance and you have not known God, we are talking to the children of God here. The food of the, of the ch child cannot be given to bastards. Hallelujah. You want to say in your mind this afternoon, I'm not calling anybody out, that daddy, I want to know you. You want to accept God as your Lord and Savior this afternoon. You want to say, God, I've forgotten everything that I've been doing till now. And I've surrendered all to you. Reign in my life today from now on. Help me. I want to, I want to enjoy this God's love, Lord Almighty. So, Lord, that my life will never be the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, our Father, our God, we just thank you. Daddy, we bless you for the opportunity to hear from the throne of grace. Please take all the glory and honor, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, as we put this thing into works in our life as you have ordered, please help us, Lord Almighty. Let doors be open unto us, left, right, and center. In the mighty name of Jesus. As we help, let us see help coming our way too. In the mighty name of Jesus. At the end of the day, let our prayer to be certain this year. To the glory of your holy name. Thank you, Almighty Daddy, for in Jesus' mighty name we prayed.